Good day, everyone. Welcome to ITU's live Q&A session on digital innovation and sustainable development. As an ex-entrepreneur, I'm excited to share the stage with my colleague, Mohamed Ba, a visionary by passion in digital innovation. Mo will respond to as many of your questions as possible in the next 30 minutes. Uh, Mo has been leading innovation in ITU's Bureau for Telecommunication Development for over eight years. Throughout, he has championed innovation policies and the development of competitive digital ecosystems. He has worked to integrate digital innovation into national development agendas and to scale up digital innovation by entrepreneurs. Prior to joining ITO, Mo has spent 18 years in the private sector, including in Silicon Valley. He has a background in engineering and computer science and a master of business administration in entrepreneurship from Babson College. You see, Mo brings a wealth of experience and knowledge to your discussion today. Before we divide into the questions, a bit of housekeeping. If you have any questions for Mo throughout our conversation, please submit them in the comments on the LinkedIn events page. And we will go through and we curate questions uh, to come up with the story of today's Q&A. We remind everyone to be respectful and please keep your comments on the topic at hand. And I see already a lot of questions and they are on hand and respectful. So thank you very much in advance. So to kick things off, uh, we'll start with one question of our own. A foundational question for Mo <laughs> on the topic of today. What is digital innovation and why is it important for sustainable development? Mo. Thank you. Thank you, Monica. Well, that's not an easy question, but because I think a lot of people think innovation, they either get scared or, or they don't really know what it means. I, I'll tell you a little bit of story. I, I, I grew up in, in, in Mali. And for me, innovation uh, is at the time, what I was thinking about innovation is when I grew up, there was a lot of things that I wanted, that I wanted to have around my community that I did not have. And one of those things that I saw that I wanted was, how couldn't we make TVs in Mali? How couldn't we make toy cars in Mali? And this sort of led to a curiosity for me. So. But to break it down for you, I want to give you the official definition of innovation, which is the OECD manual. Innovation basically, according to the OECD manual of Oslo manual, basically says innovation is a new product, new services, marketing, or new production or organizational method. So what that means is if you use innovation, you can create a product. When you can sell that product, you have productivity. So if you think about that, therefore, innovation is about creating productivity, why productivity? Because you can then move on to do something better. The challenge we have is that, can everybody do that? Are people equipped to do that? Now, to the second part of the question, what is sustainable development? Sustainable development, I think, is very contextual. Uh, if you are from the Generation X, uh, basically, you may be growing up in a certain time like me, and you may have certain desire. You did not have computers and you will need to equip yourself with computers, so this is sort of the opportunities you're looking for to develop your community. If you are a millennial, you grew up with computers, which means that there is a lot of things you want to do. There's a lot of opportunities that you would like to see. And of course, if you are a Gen Z today, you are in a completely different world. You think about the metaverse and the opportunities you want to do, and how can you do that to create economic opportunity for you? The world itself measured innovation or, or sustainable development through what we call the SDGs, right? And I think for some of you may know, before the SDGs, we had the MDGs. And before the MDGs, we actually had something called the IDGs. Now, if you look at those, then they define goals and then the world try to achieve them. And those goals are relevant to everybody. So in essence, this is what innovation is. This is what sustainable development is. Now to the third part of this question, which is what is digital? Digital, as you know, is a productivity gainer. ITU has been involved in technology since we had the telegraph, uh, to the telephone, to basically all of the other things that ITU get involved with. You probably know that you, are, you have a benefit of the streaming today because of a simple codec called H.264, very technical, but this is, again, technology that then get transferred into some kind of product and services and everybody benefit. So in essence, that's what digital innovation is important to sustainable development. 
Thank you very much. That sets the stage. And you said that digital is a productivity uh, gainer. So that takes us to a question from Sam Han from the Digital Transformation Task Force, B20 India, but originally he is from Hong Kong. And he has the que question, which are the top five industries globally that urgently require sustainable development supported by technical uh, technologies? So I think you can answer uh, this question in two ways. We can talk about the industries which are basically sort of a, uh, having trouble in terms of what they're doing to the earth and what they're doing to sustainability in general. In that case, then you can look at uh, the traditional industries, which will be the energy industry itself, which really can use digital innovation or technology to transform itself so it can be more sustainable. You're talking about probably transportation. We use a lot of energy in transportation. You're talking about constructions. And you're talking about probably uh, other areas as well. So ICT is one. I think the new really uh, area that's sort of bringing us benefit of sustainability, but also new challenges is ICT. Why? Because ICT and computing and this, our industry is really uh, getting to a space where it's having some impact on sustainable development. And those are both positive and negative impact. I think these are the industries we need to consider. Thank you very much. And I would like to apologize that in the beginning of the Q&A, the sound was not that good. But uh, I'm told by the Regie that this is fixed now, and I hope that's the case. Uh, we have a new question uh, from uh, a lady from Trinidad and Tobago. That's Yasmin Mohammed. And her question is, are there any emerging trends or technologies in the digital innovation space that you believe, Mo, uh, will be a significant impact on sustainable development in the near future? Well, I believe there are many, many technologies uh, that will have an impact. As you know, the internet has a significant impact in sustainable development. For those who know, when the pandemic happened, everybody started realizing that digital really is a key for sustainability, for value chain, uh, benefits of value chain. Uh, computing is changing very rapidly. I think quantum will have a significant impact in terms of what development means, uh, because you will have probably uh, inequality benefits from digital in many areas if you're not able to leverage it. AI is having the same effect today. And of course, you have many, many other technologies which will really cross over to these technologies. But these are the two uh, that we can think about, I think, in the very near future that will have an impact. Uh, thank you, Mo. And we follow on with a question from Martin Mbaga. Mm -hmm. He is a digital transformation and GovTech expert and consultant at the European Commission. So Martin is asking Mo uh, to identify the principal obstacles uh, mm -hmm. that countries face in effectively integrating digital innovations, innovations into their sustainable development agendas. Please, Mo. Well, thank you, Monica. The way to we can think about it is in, in sort of two parts. The first part is the part that you see that's visible. Think about it as the tip of the iceberg. I think at the tip of the iceberg, what we see a lot is the need for more uh, sort of uh, resources and capabilities for stakeholders to really drive digital innovation. But at the bottom of this iceberg, you have collaborations. Now, the collaboration to get resources and opportunities and sort of the capabilities together. What we see, if you want to drive digital innovation, you really need to understand where you're going with this. You need to have a clear view. And a lot of countries may or may not have the vision that will lead to the right futures for them. And I think there is a lot that can be done there. The second part is that we, because we don't have a lot of collaboration across stakeholders, so you have a lot of initiatives that are basically uh, done in silos. These silos are wasted resources for everybody. And also, they don't allow stakeholders to achieve the benefit that they need. The third part is really policy. As you know, uh, we, live in a, we live in a world that's increasingly volatile, increasingly complex, ambiguous, and certainly uh, uh, has a lot of implication for what's happening in our ecosystem, in, in our communities. So for that reason, policy and the agility of policy to adapt to the changing technology is important. The last part that I think we need to think about is the journey of innovators themselves. So innovators need to take their ideas and unlock opportunities. 
in the beginning of this journey, they really struggle. They struggle because they don't have the right programmatic support for them to create and take their ideas to create the prototype. Even after they create a prototype and, and they still struggle to make sure that their businesses or they can turn this into viable businesses. As you know, you can see this actually very simply. You know that 90% of all SME actually fail. The reason they fail is because they cannot figure out the right business model. They cannot figure out the right collaboration with all the partners, including the private sector, by the way. Thank you very much, Mo. And I think that is a nice bridge to uh, another question from uh, Timmy Lein Adisa, mm -hmm. uh, because you mentioned that innovators um, uh, struggle. Uh, and uh, she has a question about young innovators. Mm -hmm. What strateg strategies do you recommend to young innovators, particularly in Africa, to navigate challenges such as limited resources and infrastructure access? Yeah. That, this is an interesting question. But I think this problem is not unique to uh, young innovators. I think entrepreneurs just struggle. They struggle in the beginning because they need people to believe in them. Uh, they also need to have access to the resources. So if you're a young person and you have a good idea, the first thing you should do is probably to figure out what capability do you have? What can you commit to? The second thing I would say, you have to find the stakeholders that you can basically partner with that may have resources that they, they believe in your idea and they can basically give you those resources or you can do something together. And if you can create a positive feedback look from this and learn, then your idea will suddenly grow into some more realistic prototype. And from there, uh, as success will come, it's not going to be easy, but you will be able to achieve what you want. Now, I believe that every country has some kind of minimum resources, but of course this is not enough. Government needs to do a lot more and also other stakeholders, including the private sector. But there are already a lot of resources that we see that we did not have. When I was growing up as a Gen X, I did not have. But today, millennium, millennium have access to that, Gen Z as well. So we, we have, the opportunities are really out there. You just have to have the ambition and go get it. That's great. So finding the key partner is key, right? And that takes us to the next question from Khalil Gaha, mm -hmm. uh, who is a student at the Institut Supérieur des Études Technologiques en Communication in Tunisia. So he's a student at uh, the uh, Superior Study uh, for Technologies mm -hmm. and Communications in Tunisia. Mm -hmm. Mo, what are, in your view, the most promising avenues for public-private partnerships and collaboration on sustainable development and innovation? I think we have this question wrong a lot of time. I don't think it's about public-private partnership. I think it's about, for, for sure, nobody can do it alone, right? As I explained in the example earlier, if you're an innovator, you're trying to start, it's about finding the, exactly the person and the resources you need. This may not even be from the uh, private sector. It may actually be from your friends. It may actually be for people you know in school. So we have to think about this question of public-private partnership in terms of what type of resources do I need? I want to make, and I want to give a very simple analogy. I always like using this. It's about making a pie. You have a small ingredient. Maybe you have enough ingredient to make a small pie. Now, you live in a community where everybody has enough ingredient to make a small pie. You're only going to make one type of pie, right? You're going to make maybe like strawberry. Maybe you're going to make strawberry. Somebody else will make chocolate. But if you can find a common ground and you can collaborate, you understand where you're going, then you will have the capacity to actually make a bigger pie. And I think this is where the mindset comes in because I think we, we've grown up in societies and, and this is sort of a fact of our specializations, right? We have institutions that are going in silos for a good reason because they need to specialize. But this specialization comes at a cost because they no longer know how to collaborate. So collaboration with all the stakeholders, entrepreneurs, government, policymakers, academics who are training them to make sure that they give them the right talent. Entrepreneurial support network, financiers, people who will give them access. And I think this is really the key, is how can we pull enough resources so we can all make a bigger pie? And since you all live, we all live on the same earth, right? We all live in a community, and those communities as resources, it's in the best of interest to actually collaborate and make this happen. So again, the, what I want to say here is, and, and there is a proverb that say, uh, 
if you want to go alone, you can go fast, but you know the rest, right? Yes, you can go uh, if you go, to if you go together, together. You can for, uh, go exactly. Long and and far. this is, this is why <laughs> small and medium businesses fail because they don't necessarily know how to find these additional resources. This is why the people who start innovation generally fails because they really think they can do it alone. And innovation is about young or old. In many times, what you have is you have young people because when you're young, you actually have energy. But the people with experience and resources are probably older. So it's, it's really cross-generational, cross-sector, cross-stakeholders. That would be the key, I think. Thank you, Mo. So you said what's needed to bake the pie, right? Now we would like to know uh, who is the pie for, you know? So, and that's the question from Tadenda Gotora from the Postal and Telecommunications Regulatory Authority of Zimbabwe, mm -hmm. which nicely perhaps closes this Q&A. But I think we have a bit more time. And please put your questions into the event mm -hmm. chat so we can take on some more. We still have uh, 10 minutes. So her question or his question is, to what extent can technologies improve the daily lives of the common people who live in the unconnected? and remote areas of the, develop, of the developing and the underdeveloped countries. And let's add also in developed countries mm -hmm. because the connectivity there also uh, uh, needs infra infrastructure investment. So mm. I, I the beneficiary of the pie. <laughs> well, the beneficiary of pie, well, first of all, I think we really all need to think about the beneficiaries that we're actually doing our programs for and our initiatives for. In this case, I want to tell you a little bit of story. This story is really about ITU in a way and about the development sector. Did you know that the development sector was a result of some decision by member state to say, where somebody made a proposal to say, well, we have telephones now and we believe that these telephones can help the farmer. Why? Because the farmer can make a call. The farmer can basically find the prices of his crop and can, can basically sell can sell them. <laughs> Now that's technology, it is ITU. This led to basically the creation of the development sector later, right? It's a long story, you can read it online, I'm sure. But technology is really there to help you do a job. Technology is not the root cause of change, and we need to remember this. So the first thing is, are we able to solve all the problems of people in rural areas? Do we have to connect them first? Or do we need new thinking to figure out how we can deliver what they need, and that may not mean that you connect them first. If you live in a rural area, you probably want some kind of information to get access to crops. I think we have seen a lot of application in this. You probably want more than that help. You probably want to ensure your crop. Do we have innovators that we're unleashing to create a whole value chain around agriculture? Are we doing this deliberately, or are we just hoping that stakeholders, at some point, somebody recognizes the problem? So what I want to say here is that we need a deliberate process to actually trigger the creation of these innovation stakeholders, people who are collaborating and focusing on solving the problems. Because as you know, there is actually a big difference between our industrial revolutions. When we went from the agricultural revolution to the industrial revolutions, you could actually upgrade people, right? Productivity kept in line with jobs and people could actually upgrade themselves. But we are entering an age where productivity is no longer linear. Productivity is basically going up to a few stakeholders and this may be creating some inequity. And the only way to fix this is to make sure that when we develop digital innovation, we think about the communities, we think about the systems or the stakeholders that are in the community, and then we then create the right solutions for them. So we should always have the stakeholders and the beneficiary in mind when we do uh, our digital innovation. Uh, thank you very much, Mo. So we stay with the beneficiaries, and we have a question from uh, Sacré Bogu mm -hmm. from uh, Côte d'Ivoire um, in English. How can we very simply promote collaboration between local innovators, researchers, and investors to create sustainable digital solutions. Um, and there is another one which mm. I actually wanted to pick. I'm sorry. How can we seriously ensure that digital skills are taught in a way that is inclusive and accessible to all? That's also from Sacré Bogum. So 
pick your Well, I, I mean, we, we can try to address both because, again, do you have the capability on the ground to identify the problem and to be able to drive the programmatic need? Remember what I said earlier? Initiatives and programs are falling behind because stakeholders are not necessarily recognizing what they need to build ahead of it. Why do we have a question about digital skills now after the fact? Like you'll see, for example, a lot of people talk about AI, AI, AI. But isn't it a bit late to train people in AI now or to have these other digital skills that are coming up? I think part of what needs to happen is that together the community understand where they're going and that the other stakeholders, policymakers have the right policy, that the program owners basically create the right programs. Collaboration needs to be well thought out. Collaboration needs systems to be in place. Now, what this means is that you probably need to find a way to break all the silos. This is, by the way, why the development sector, uh, the BDT director has launched an initiative last year called the Innovation Entrepreneurship Alliance for Digital Development. And this alliance was put in to make sure that stakeholders have access to local innovation capacity because we have a lot of global innovation capacity. What we don't have is local innovation capacity. So the way we wanted to solve this at ITU is to bring people local capacity by giving them five capabilities. One of those capabilities to see how do you want to shape your community so you can leverage technology in the future. So it's a bit of the strategic planning, foresight, things like that. The second capability was to say, if you're going to create an initiative that will, for example, train digital skills for people, that this is done with collaboration for all stakeholders. So here we're trying to basically make sure initiatives are creating with synergies. The third capability that this initiative is trying to do at the national level, again, is to help people with policy. So you may, for example, have a new technology that comes in for digital skills, but this technology, you cannot use it because the law or the policy is not allowing. Maybe you need uh, some new regulations. So this initiative is to help countries so that they can, if they understand where they're going, they understand what they need to build, then they can experiment. So it's sort of like the policy experimentation that's needed. And the last two initiatives is to really unleash basically innovators. In this case, it will be to create local content, local content that they can use, and also to turn those local content creators into market opportunities. So in essence, I think collaboration needs a deliberate system to fix what, what I see as a broken system in many cases, which is the lack of collaboration. Okay, thank you. So you, you mentioned some of the barriers uh, on the local level, uh, which was uh, speaking to meaningful connectivity, one of our uh, goals, uh, universal meaningful connectivity, so the mm -hmm. content is there in the language you need, relevant uh, to where you live. Um, and I'd like to come back to uh, Martin, mm -hmm. who asked a question, Martin Mbaga, uh, who works uh, as a consultant for Euro the European Commission, who also asked, uh, whether you could elaborate on the support that ITU is offering to help overcome barriers, be it local yeah. or uh, global or uh, national. Could yeah. you please elaborate a bit on that one? Yeah, I, I, this sort of goes back to what I said earlier. Technology is disrupting everything. Technology is changing exponentially, and that has an impact on policies, programs, and initiatives that countries put in place. So one of the things that we try to do to help countries is to do a holistic assessment of how technology is impacting some of their sectors and how entrepreneurship can be driven. So we have been doing this for a while now at ATU, where we go in a country, we basically do a full assessment, we give them recommendation on how they can address all the things that they need to address to foster digital innovation. Now the second way we try to help with this is again, we realize that at the end of the day, it's not just giving people an assessment and a roadmap. You actually have to build local capabilities. This is why, again, uh, we're now helping countries build these acceleration centers. And these acceleration centers will basically give countries the capacity that they can then fine tune to what they want to solve. And, and because every ecosystem is unique, every community is unique, which means that they need to be able to, to work together to address those uh, with the capabilities. 
So this goes back to the five capabilities that I mentioned earlier. Okay, thank you. Uh, I'm looking for the question I had on drones uh, mm -hmm. from uh, Carabo, student in Botswana, but I have to find him. Here we are. Um, what are some of emerging trends and technologies in the autonomous drone industry that hold promise for advancing sustainable development goals? No. I think drones is a sort of a fascinated technology, right? Uh, drones can do many things, but one of the things we see more and more, and there are also limitations in drones today. There are limitations in drones, for example, in battery, right? Because the batteries cannot last that long. Uh, so that's one technology, if it improves, I think will have significant impact on the drone industry. Uh, we also have uh, challenges and opportunities with policy. Because if you're a drone startup, let's say you want to create a drone corridor in an agricultural area, you need to be able to negotiate with the transport ministry, the agricultural ministry, and uh, probably other stakeholders to be able to put that in place. Do we have sandboxes or places where people can go experiment with drone today? Probably not. There may be some innovative places that, that does that, right? There are other technologies with IoT, for example, that's related to drone. Internet of things. Internet <laughs> of things. And what you have to realize is that what's unique about our new industrial revolutions is that all these technologies are combining. So it's not just drone technology, it's, it's battery technology, it's internet of things, it's probably AI now, right? Because you can have autonomous drones. And then I you will also need to have access to the opportunities. So it's, it's really a variety of technologies that perhaps are coming to maturity. And what we need is that we need an environment that can unlock these opportunities with the right time. Because remember, some of these technologies have been around a long time, like AI. It has been around for a mm. long time. Yes. But we've only had a breakthrough in the technology recently because we have enough computing power, we have enough all of these other things, and suddenly we're able to unlock that. So innovation doesn't have to be new. But what needs to happen is that the ingredients have to come together at the right time, and we also need the right people to be focusing on this. Thank you. So stay in the business. Uh, have, uh, have the uh, patience to wait for the breakthrough. Um, to close this Q&A, be because we're coming to an end, is there anything uh, you would recommend to each and every of our followers, whether they're entrepreneurs or government yeah. uh, people, uh, or none of this, but just interested in digital technologies and how they can improve their lives and communities? Is there anything yeah. you give them that they can do now today? Well, I think the first thing is they shouldn't be afraid of technology. And technology is not the root cause of change. It's actually an enabler. What they need to do is if they're really interested and they want to help, they should go around in their community, talk to the people who know these things, and try to understand how they can help. And this is important because everybody can help in the way. It's not We cannot just leave this journey of innovation to the innovators. Policymakers need to help, but if they're on their side and they're not talking to entrepreneurs, it will not happen. If you're a policymaker, go talk to the entrepreneurs. If you are an academic, go talk to people in industry and make sure you understand you can train the right skills for the future. If you are in the financial sector, go talk to other people as well. So at the end of the day, what I would like to say is that I think there needs to be more collaborations. And second, ITU does have a lot of resources for this. As you know, we, we have many sectors. We have three sectors where we do a lot of work, get involved. Uh, we can, you can get involved in standardization. Maybe you'll be defined in the next standard that's changing your community, and you have a chance to actually say that. In development, we do a lot. We're building these acceleration centers, be part of it. We also do many other topics uh, in the development sector. Now, I think uh, we also have many resources. We have the ITU Academy. In the ITU Academy, one of my favorite courses is, is basically a strategic foresight. So if you really want to open mm. up your eyes a bit and understand where you need to go, go on ITU Academy. It's a free course. Take it. If you finish that course, you have many other courses on different topics. So I will stop here, but I think uh, 
whatever it is, do something. I think uh, the, we, have, we live in an age where opportunity is boundless. When I grew up, I did not have all these opportunities. And I always remind people this. I say every century, every generation has a lifetime opportunity. Seize it so the next generation can benefit. If you don't do that, then we will be in trouble because they have to catch up with what you have not fixed in your generation. Thank you very much, Bo. So I will say sign up on the ITU Academy to this uh, strategic foresight course. I'm a firm believer in it, which is going beyond technology and uh, economic, social, environmental factors that come into play. Many of these courses on the ITU Academy are for free and for everyone. So thank you very much for your uh, answers and your questions, because without your fantastic questions, we wouldn't have had this interesting uh, discussion. If we could not address your uh, questions here live uh, in these 30 minutes, then uh, we aim to provide the answers on the event page. So uh, please uh, stay tuned and check out. Uh, Mo will uh, provide his insights uh, after the chat. And to dive deeper into digital innovation for sustainable development, I su suggest that you join us on the 17th of May in mm -hmm. one week, 4 p.m. CST, uh, for ITU's 159th anniversary, believe it, which is all about digital innovation for prosperity. You will hear from innovators, regulators, business angels, young entrepreneurs, established companies, and an astronaut how they innovate for prosperity. You will find more about this on www.itu.int. And bye for now from ITU, the UN Digital Agency. Thank you, Mo. Thank you, Thank everyone. Bye-bye.